lovelies and welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and this is the happenings with HAP. HAP meaning my initials. It is officially October. I am in the midst of the spooky season and if you guys have noticed I have changed my intro for October a little bit. Hope you guys like it and I'm going to try as much as I can to bring some spooky content to the channel so stay tuned for that but today is going to be pretty simple it is going to be my october tbr it's october it's spooky season so this is a great month to have a very specific type of tbr and i definitely do so as always thank you for visiting my channel i hope you enjoy the content and if you have not already please subscribe down below hit the bell to get those notifications comment like dislike whatever tickles your little fancies and we are going to get into the video so here is my october tbr as with most tbrs i am unsure if i'm going to get to all of these books but i think this is probably pretty reasonable to be able to finish in 31 days we shall see the first book on my list is the turn of the screw by henry james you're probably wondering a bit about why i chose this book the main reason is that i want to have a prep for netflix's the haunting of Bly manor which is the season Season two of the anthology for The Haunting of Hill House. The Haunting of Bly Manor is actually an adaptation of probably a very loose one, much like The Haunting of Hill House of The Turn of the Screw. So for those that don't know, The Turn of the Screw was written in 1898 and it is a horror novella that follows a young governess who goes to this manor mansion to take care of these two young children. Throughout her stay there, she's starting to believe that the grounds are haunted. As with most older classics, this novel has many adaptations, most famously The Innocents from 1961 and The Others from 2001 starring Nicole Kidman was also a very loose adaptation. For those that have seen those films and may not have read the book, you kind of get an idea of what's going on. I just kind of want to have an appreciation and an understanding of the base materials so that I can see in The Haunting of Blind Manor just kind of what they've taken, what they've changed. I just like to read the source material if I can. And since it is so short, I should be able to finish it pretty quickly. I think the audiobook's only like four hours. It should be a pretty quick read and I definitely want to read it before I watch that season. And for those who don't know, The Haunting of Bly Manor is starting on Netflix on October 9th. Be on the lookout because I'll probably end up talking about it on this channel for sure. The next book on my list is The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Based on what I've read about the synopsis for this book, it does give me turn of the screw vibes so it kind of makes sense that I would include it on this TBR but I've had this book on my TBR like on Goodreads for a really long time it's interested me I just have never really felt in the mood to read it and obviously what better time than now to do it so the turn of the key is basically a letter written by the main character who is in prison at the beginning of the novel for a child's murder and she's kind of retelling the events and it basically revolves around her applying for a live-in nanny job in Scotland and the house is beautiful, modern, high tech, everything like a picture, per picture perfect family, but stuff starts to go awry and there's a lot of issues and things aren't as perfect and the opportunity isn't as wonderful as it may at first seem. And throughout the novel, she is basically telling the story to prove that she is in fact innocent of the murder she's being charged for. I don't know too much else about it, but I'm very much intrigued because it sounds spooky and I'm here for spooky. So this sounds like it'll be a great book for this month. The next book on my list is actually a physical book. I know, when does that ever happen? I want to try to get through a lot of the books on my shelves because they've been on there forever, but the next book I want to read is Night Music by John Connolly, which is Nocturnes Volume 2. So Nocturnes is basically a series of short stories and short novellas written by John Connolly in just like a short story anthology form. That's basically the same thing of, as Night Music. And for those that know, The Book of Lost Things by John Connolly is one of my favorite books. He's such a great horror writer and fantasy creepy writer. So I'm really much looking forward to this. I read Nocturnes before I even moved to New York. So it was about 12, 13, 14 years ago. So a long time, but I'm very much looking forward to this and I want to actually be able to read a physical book, like in my hand physical book, since I haven't in a while. So this is a perfect opportunity because it's something I can stop and start and put down because they're all short stories. But it is still a pretty meaty boy. It's about like 
over 400 pages. So it's still a lot in here and I definitely need to like start tackling it now. Definitely looking forward to finishing this and reading it because it's been on my shelf forever and I'm tired of looking at books that I haven't read. So hopefully I get to this one. So the next series of books that I'm hoping to get to is going to be yet another step in my attempt at getting through Stephen King's catalog. I have a series of Stephen King books that I'm looking to read that are on the shorter end and have been ones that I've been wanting to read. A couple are newer, but I've only read three Stephen King books before. I read The Shining, Doctor Sleep, and The Body. So, you know, I definitely have a lot of catching up to do through his catalog, but uh, this time of year is a perfect time. So if I can fit as many as I possibly can, I wanna try to do that. So the first book on the list and the first book that I'm actually currently reading is Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. And I'm not going to talk about it too much. For those that don't know, Lewis and his family moved to Maine where he takes up a position as like a head doctor at the University of Maine and basically moves his whole family from Chicago there. And on the land that they live on in the woods, there's a small pet cemetery that apparently can bring uh, pets back to life. And one bad decision leads to another. And let's just say it is not a good time for Lewis and his family. I'm so far really enjoying the book. I don't want to talk about, about it more than that. I will get into it next month in my wrap up, but it's much different than I thought it would be. I will say that for sure. This one is one I'm definitely going to finish since I'm almost finished with it now. The next book on my list is The Long Walk, also by Stephen King. And I picked this one because yes, it's shorter, but the premise is very interesting. It is a dystopian horror novel. The US is basically turned into a fascist totalitarian regime. Yeah. <laughs> and it is an annual contest where a hundred boys start at the main Canadian border and they have to walk all the way down the entire east coast of the US, which I will insert a map and show you how far that actually is. So they have to walk that entire way without rest or stopping and have to maintain a speed of four miles an hour. If they take a break, they get a warning. If they take another break, they get ticketed. And essentially the contest doesn't end until there is one winner and that winner's prize is basically getting anything that they want. This is very intriguing because this was written in 1979. This was pre-Hunger Games, pre-Battle Royale. So this is like an original. The kids have to pay for the faults of parents' dystopian future novel. And I definitely want to read it because clearly this is one of the earliest iterations of this type of dystopian novel. And I really want to just see what these other pieces of literature and films have probably taken as ideas from this book. So I'm actually really excited to read this because I've never even heard of it until I started looking at like shorter Stephen King books. Definitely excited for this one for sure. The next Stephen King book on my list is The Institute. I'm not gonna lie, the main reason I at first wanted to read this book was because Santino Fontana is doing the audiobook for it and he is the audiobook narrator of the U series. So I was very excited for that because I'm like, yes, if I can have his lovely voice speak to me in headphones for a few hours, I will be very happy gal. But after looking at the synopsis, I definitely am interested in actually reading the book for its own merits aside from the narrator. The book follows a group of children that are kidnapped in the middle of the night and taken to a place called the Institute where they are kept separated from each other in these like separate rooms. But all of the children actually have powers like telepathy and telekinesis and stuff like that. So it was only published in 2019, so it's current. And it definitely is giving me the boys vibes, the diviners and X-Men and all that kind of like people with powers, but possibly powers for the wrong reasons type of thing. So I didn't want to read too much more into it, but essentially this is another novel of his where the kids are kind of the main characters and they run the show and them trying to escape this institute. And I love the idea of that. Stephen King really, for some reason, is really good at writing children that are very realistic. Now, so I'm excited to read another book of his where children are the main characters and the main ones moving the plot forward because I just always think it's very interesting how he writes children. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this one. This is probably the longest I think Stephen King book I might be trying to read. I'm not 100% but I think it is. 
The next book on my list by Stephen King is going to be Carrie. Now I've watched this movie many, 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 many times. It's older than me, so it's definitely a October Halloween staple. And I really just want to read the original piece. And it's one of his shortest books. I'm going to be reading this on audiobook. And what's really cool is because the newer version of the audiobook that I'm going to be reading is actually narrated by Sissy Spacek, who starred as Carrie in the original film. So that's really cool because if anyone knows about that character, it's it's her. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this and have her read it to me. The book is about Carrie who is a high school student that is severely severely bullied and severely severely abused by her mother at home and she has telekinesis powers and ends up giving everyone their just desserts. It's a horror novel but it's also very like sad and tragic what ends up happening to her if the novel actually follows the film. I'm not 100% if it does. So I'm very much looking forward to reading this as I've watched this movie forever so I'm very happy to finally be getting to read the source material for it. And the last book on my list and the last Stephen King book that I'm hoping to get to, this is one is probably going to be the bigger maybe than all the other ones just because of time. That book is Salem's Lot. The only thing I know about this book is that it is basically Stephen King's take on vampires. This is his second published novel, Carrie actually being his first. So throughout this TBR I'll actually be getting to read his earliest works as well as his most recent so it's actually kind of cool to see how he's grown as an author. The novel follows a writer that returns back to his hometown and finds that it's pretty much overrun by vampires and basically he has to try to save the town from evil. That's the synopsis in its most basic form because I didn't want to read too much and get spoiled. As we all know I love vampires so I'm very curious to see Stephen King's take on vampires. I'm pretty sure that they're more classic Stoker-esque type of vampires than say are you know the Anne Rice vampires if you will. It's a classic and I believe it Stephen King said it is one of his favorites so I definitely would like to get to read it. Will I get to it this month? I'm not 100% sure. I really hope I do. I hope I get to all of these books. I should get to more than half of them, hopefully. So yeah, that is my TBR for October. A lot of spooky. I'm very excited for it. I hope I get to all these books. I most likely will get to most of them. We shall see, but I'm definitely trying to get through as much Stephen King as possible because I really do love his writing and he's just the perfect novelist to read during this time of year. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a comment down below about some of your October TBRs. Have you read any of these books that I'm planning to read? Do you guys have other books that you think I should read and maybe try to squeeze in? I don't know if I'll be able to, but you never know. Leave those comments down below. I'd love to read them. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!